Hey guys, I'm Jameson with Rogue Engineer and today I'm going to show you how I made two of these modern but simple tapered planter boxes for under a hundred bucks. Let's get right into it. All right, so now we're gonna cut this plywood down into three 28 and three quarter inch sections. And then we're gonna take it over to the table saw and cut some dados um, to get that modern look that we're going for. However, don't worry necessarily about all of these dimensions because I'll have all of them in the plans available on the website um, and we'll place a link somewhere that you can get to those. Okay, so before I cut the tapered ends for the sides, I'm gonna go ahead and um, put the dados in each of those sides. Since they're all together, it'd be nice and easy just to run it through the table saw with a dado blade, a quarter inch dado blade on that right now. However, I do need to get um, the bottoms of the planter box um, or the, the shelf basically that the, the plant will sit on. I need to get those out before I cut those dados. So that's what I'm gonna do now. We need about a 13 and 5 8 inch square, um, or two rather, for one for each planter. So we'll cut those now. All right, so the look that we're going for here is a one by eight shiplap. So we're gonna cut a quarter inch wide by quarter inch deep dado every seven to seven and a quarter, well, seven and a quarter if you add the dado itself. So seven inches in between each dado. So we're gonna space the fence uh, seven inches away from the inside of the dado blade, and then we're gonna cut the dado on one side of the board, rotate it 180 degrees, and then cut the dado on the other side of the board. Okay, so now that we've got all of the outside dados cut, we're gonna go ahead and slide this fence over to 14 and a quarter inches away from the interior side of the dado blade and cut that center dado down the middle of all of these boards. So the bottom of the planter sides are 12 inches and the top is 16 inches. So when you're measuring out for the first cut on the side of the board, you wanna measure in two inches and then lay out the bottom, which is another 12 inches. So you'll mark two and 14 and then cut up to the corner and then out to 16 as well. But again, all of this is gonna be in the plan, so if you need a pictorial layout of all of this, you can get that on my website. All right, so I've got my Craig jig here and we're set to a three quarter inch thick material and we're gonna start drilling some pocket holes in the sides. Um, so each side on the back side, the flat side, the one without the dados in it, is gonna get four to five pocket holes. This side got four on one side and five on the other. Um, you like to mix things up. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that, but whatever you feel comfortable with. If you want more, go for more. Anyway, we're gonna drill pocket holes in the back side of each one of the sides, and then we're going to um, assemble the planter with two by two legs. So the legs are gonna connect each one of these sides to the next. Okay, so we're gonna start attaching the sides to the legs. And um, in order to do that, I've actually used a piece of the scrap, it, scrap three quarter inch material, and that's gonna bring this side panel right up to the exact height that I need for the legs. I'm gonna go ahead and mark a half an inch down on the leg because I want that leg to actually be a little bit higher than the side. So I'm gonna measure a half inch down on the leg and I'm gonna mark all of those, and then we're gonna start attaching the sides to the legs with the exterior blue coat screws from Craig.
right, so I'm getting the screws started on these supports and I'm using a two inch exterior grade screw and that's gonna be enough to go through the supports and then into the plywood sides. Now I'm gonna set these supports down enough to accommodate the bucket that, uh, that my plant is in, which is about 13 inches. And those supports are actually gonna support the shelf that that bucket, that plant will sit on. Okay, so while we use the MDO plywood, the medium density overlay plywood for the, the panels, um, we use that because it's a good exterior weather resistant uh, plywood panel. However, we did a couple extra steps to make sure that it was as weather resistant as we needed it to be. Um, one of which we painted the entire surface with an exterior grade paint and uh, that included the bottom of the feet. But even after we painted those feet, we added some little rubber um, feet to the bottom of it so that the, the moisture that was on the ground or in the ground is not going to be sucked up into the bottom of those legs. Now our planter is going to be under a covered porch so it didn't need to be completely weatherproof. However, if yours is going to be outside full time, there's a couple of extra steps that you can take to make it more weatherproof than this one. One of which would be plugging the interior pocket holes to make sure that no moisture is sitting inside of those before you paint the interior surface of the box. Another of which is you can actually apply a thin layer of waterproofing wood glue to the top or any, um, any exposed edges of the plywood where the plywood had been cut. So all of the top of these panels as well as the bottoms, you could apply a thin layer of waterproof wood glue before you apply that exterior paint to it. So with the shelf in, it's time to take this thing up to the house and put our tree in it. I want to give a big thank you to our sponsor for this video, Craig Tool Company. Their AccuCut circular saw system can turn any circular, circular saw into a track saw, making these tapered cuts a whole lot easier than it could have been. So if you like this project, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Otherwise, until next time, be safe and happy building.